everybody and welcome to today's video. If you are new here, my name is Lauren. If you're not new here, welcome back as always. Today you are joining me in a very cosy, laid back setting. I just, well first start I've been putting this video off for so long. It's just a bit of a one difficult situation to talk about and two like it's hard to have a proper structure to it and I've just been putting it off for such a long time. But today is finally my mental health update. So I'll be talking about citalopram and emetophobia. These are two things that I know a lot of my followers not followers subscribers on here are wanting to hear about and also that's where a lot of my traffic in terms of viewers comes from because my last well to be fair all the videos I've done on Satalapram have like skyrocketed in views compared to my other videos like my hauls and vlogs and stuff I owe it to you guys to do this video recovery is like so up and down so different every day so it's hard to be like yeah so this is what's happening now because it's so unpredictable like I don't know I think this is a good time to do it to be honest because it's coming up to a year on Satalapram Talapram so I can do like a full year update. Been in my flat for a year and I've also finished my first year of uni and I'm also in a relationship now too which is a big thing when you struggle with your mental health and I've had a few questions like on TikTok and in my Instagram DMs about how my relationship is with emetophobia and with mental health in general and like how I cope with it and how Yuan copes with it and stuff so I feel like it's the perfect time to see this video. If you're only interested in like one of the sections it'll all be listed down below and you can just click on the timestamp. Before I go into the video I just want to remind everyone that this is my experience I'm not a doctor I'm not a therapist professional at all this is just my experience how I deal thing deal things deal with things so this is just me being like a friend or a fellow supporter if you want to message me on Instagram about any of this feel free likewise if you want to feel less alone in all of this you can follow my TikTok because I know that my TikTok has helped a lot of people that seems really big headed but like loads of people have told me that my TikTok has helped them yeah I guess it might help you I'm not too sure I'm gonna quickly go over university and living alone for the first time because I feel like they're the two least juiciest and I can just like get them out of the way as quickly as possible so as I said before I've just finished my first year of uni I've finished my first year of living alone well I haven't I still haven't moved to my flat but I've basically done a year living alone overall I think it went okay it could have gone a lot better but I got through it and I made a lot of good memories this year. I just love everyone on my course. I miss them all so much. I can't wait to go back in September which is a good sign. I'm excited to go back. I remember saying in my last video in around November that the main struggle with uni was actually my timetable because my timetable is pretty full on. It's 9am till 5.30pm most days. I still definitely struggle with it. My attendance the whole year hasn't been as I'd hoped it would be but at the same time I kind of like knew that was expected because I'd gone from like not being able to leave the house at all to being thrown straight into the deep end that isn't very fun most days once I get into uni I am pretty much okay I have a few wobbles as I said my attendance wasn't the best it's probably the worst it's ever been but at the same time I'm not the type of person to let myself fall behind or fail so I came out with really good grades for first year I came out with three firsts and one high two one but to be fair the person that marked the module that I got my two one in is very harsh I'm excelling in the fields that I want to go into and that's all that matters really my flat I remember I said in my last video I was really struggling with like the food aspect in terms of like cooking because I like cooking I can cook I am able to do that but mentally I can't deal with it all the time so back then I hadn't really used my oven that much I'd used the hob but I hadn't used the oven I just wasn't very adventurous and I'm still not adventurous like a year later I'm still not where I hoped I'd be again but I have used the oven I've cooked for me and you on a few times it is normally just like the same few meals that I circulate with but I didn't think I'd be able to do it to be honest again it's probably something that people watching this video that don't struggle will be like wow she used the oven but the intrusive thoughts when I try and use my oven are just a lot to handle and some days I'm not strong enough to deal with that and some days I am you just gotta take it as it comes moving on to the next part I am going to be talking about citalopram which is definitely the most requested part of this video I am also going to try and talk a bit slower in this video I don't know if people have noticed I feel like I am talking a lot slower I got comments saying that people couldn't understand what I was saying <laughs> yeah I'm just gonna try and talk a bit slower but I am on citalopram I've been on citalopram for 11 months so about a year let's just say a year I take 
20 milligrams a day now in the liquid form so I take eight drops of citalopram every morning and put it in orange juice apple juice water because it tastes rank quite a few people didn't know that you could get it in liquid form so when I did a video on TikTok of me doing like a remember to take your meds kind of video I think I posted it on YouTube as a short as well people were really confused what I was taking because they'd been on citalopram and didn't know that you could get it in liquid drops because I can't take tablets because of a meta but you can get it in liquid form the only bad thing about citalopram drops is that it's a bit more expensive as a prescription but luckily I do not pay for my prescriptions so I originally went on citalopram for anxiety management for sleep for appetite just all areas needed a bit of improvement to be honest and I tried therapy for years on and off and it just hadn't worked I'd been offered meds for so long and I straight up said no I don't want to be on meds taking medication doesn't like really cure it just kind of suppresses it or like helps you along but I was just at a point where I was like I've tried everything I can at this moment in time and nothing's working and I just feel so stuck so I finally gave into it honestly a year later I can say that I think it's the best thing I've ever done for recovery it's not fixed me at all I'm still in a pretty awful place if I'm being honest I feel like it's wore off a tiny tiny bit but I don't know if that's just because I need my dose up and again which is something I need to speak to my psychiatrist about whenever I get to see him because I'll go on to that in a bit it's been an absolute nightmare so Talapram has helped me so much it's given me like general confidence like my career is to do with music and music performance that's what I'm studying at university I used to be a shaker when I performed but I didn't really shake anymore when I perform and I think that it genuinely is because of like the general anxiety that citalopram has suppressed for me. So other than panic, another of the main reasons I went on citalopram was for my sleep. I was going to sleep at like 7am most nights. I tend to go to sleep, I'd say around 3pm, not 3pm. 3am I also feel like over night time I'm so much more productive but I also know that that's like an avoidance technique because emetophobes struggle with sleep because they like to be in control at all times for example if I was going to be sick in the night I'd much rather be sat up waiting to be sick than go to sleep and wake up in shock to be sick because I wouldn't feel as like prepared let's talk side effect of citalopram I've not had any big scary bad ones like I've had a few annoying ones but they normally just come and go in my last video I was saying that my main side effect that I was like struggling with the most was just like lack of emotion so back in November when I filmed that video I couldn't really cry like I'm an emotional person I cry a lot of things but back then I couldn't cry I felt like it would never go away but it did go away and back to my emotional self which has its pros and cons so the two main side effects I've noticed that I assume are from citalopram well these are two newer ones I obviously had some in the last video which was like bruising but that also could be linked to like anemia and stuff i had a bit of hair loss that has stopped my hair has stopped falling out which is bloody brilliant i'm glad about that one i've noticed that my skin is itchy which i didn't know was a side effect of medication it apparently is and the second one is really vivid dreams like i've always had nightmares but the past like six months they're just another level they really are not even nightmares to be honest they're not like really scary but they're just so like realistic i feel like i'm dreaming in 4k that's a very common side effect of all antidepressants i think just because it does things to your brain i guess i also just went to get a my drink and then remembered a side effect i haven't written down is dry mouth i always have a dry mouth i had something to say but it's gone oh my head yeah. oh yeah I wasn't very clear on my emotions coming back because I just said that they come back they haven't come back the same because that wouldn't be very good because before citalopram I was too emotional I was crying at stupid things several times a day so they've come back but in a more stable manner that's always a bonus like I'm more emotionally stable now I also did hit one year panic attack free which I don't know if that was to do with the citalopram but I did say in my last video as well that I felt like citalopram blocked me from having panic attacks. I'd have all the emotion for it but I wouldn't have an outburst of full blown shaking crying panic attack. But two weeks ago I did have my first panic attack in over a year and it took it out of me. It wasn't very fun for anyone that was involved to be honest. Like it was embarrassing. It shouldn't be embarrassing but it was embarrassing. It was so out of the blue. It happened in the night when I was trying to sleep. I wasn't at home. I was at my boyfriend's. It just shocked me so much. It shocked 
pour you on because he'd never seen anything like that before. It was really upsetting because I thought my medication stopped me from having panic attacks and then it didn't. It didn't stop me from having one that time. So when I actually went into full blown panic, I was like, why is my medication not working? Like, why is this happening? I didn't think it could happen. I nearly had like a, I wouldn't say it was another panic attack because it wasn't like full, but I had like a mini almost full blown one the other day. It was during the heat wave and I was walking back to my flat in Liverpool and to get to my flat, it's uphill and it was so hot and I got to the top of the hill. I couldn't breathe and then I couldn't open the gate and I wanted to get in my flat so bad because I felt sick. Like I was just really anxious and I couldn't get into my gate. The key wouldn't work and I was just stood outside my gate and I was like, I'm going to have a panic attack. Like I stood there shaking. Finally got in and managed to calm myself down before it went too much out the window. I am a bit more nervous and a bit more apprehensive to do things again now, which isn't great. I got to such a good place and thought I was like past panic attacks, like not past them. I didn't think I'd never have one again. I thought I was a bit more free than I feel again now. Before the incident of the panic attack, thanks to Citalopram, I was a lot more brave. Like I was cooking in my flat as I said like that was something that I couldn't do before. I was also socialising a bit more like I went down to Chorley for my friend Karis's birthday which I wouldn't have been able to do without the meds I don't think. Just in general like I've been going to like blogging events, I've met new friends so I met up with Lorraine, I've been doing gigs like I'm doing a lot of things that I've wanted to do for ages. I don't necessarily like enjoy them as much as I should or as much as I'd like to but I am able to do them which is something I couldn't do a year ago. Biggest one which is what I'm going to go on to next. I managed to go on a date with Yuan at the start of the year. That also took a lot out of me like I was so scared to get in a relationship again. Not necessarily open up to someone because I am an advocate for mental health like I'm sat in my bedroom talking to my camera to share with the world about emetophobia and mental health for god's sake but when it comes like one-to-one -one, like very personal conversations about my own journey I kind of freeze up and I think they're gonna leave if I tell them about it. Before I had the date with Yuan, Yuan had stalked my TikTok he'd seen about emetophobia he had like questions about it and stuff which made it easier because he had some kind of idea and our first date was really chill. We went for a coffee. Fun fact on that coffee day I didn't get a coffee. Yuan was like do you want anything and I was like no because I was too scared. A relationship with emetophobia is not easy for either parties. I will give that to Yuan like he deserves an absolute medal. I didn't think there was people like Yuan in this world. I knew there was good people in the world but I didn't think I would find somebody like Yuan. I'm not gonna get emotional. I'm not gonna get emotional. I do feel like he was sent from like someone up there like my nan because I feel like this past year I've spoke about it with my friends and stuff but I feel like my nan who passed away when I was little is like doing a lot of things for me in terms of like career and like yeah that's a completely different video but I feel like my nan had something to do with Yuan and that's like a lovely thing to think about but anyway in terms of recovery so Yuan is really good at like getting me out my flat even if it is to just go and grab a coffee to do like a little weekly shop not a weekly shop I don't do a weekly shop just a shop like to get like essentials some days it does take a lot some days i will get upset about it and not want to go out and he'll just sit with me but it's just really helpful in stuff like that before i used my oven i cooked for him in my oven so he was like my guinea pig he was fine eating my food so then i was like okay i can try it that was not me force feeding him my cooking he was like no we'll get you to use your oven cook for me first and we'll go from there. I will say if you are watching this and wanting to navigate a relationship with mental health and with emetophobia, I would say, as cliche as it sounds, communi can't say it, communication is key. There's been a lot of times where there has been like bumps in the road with me and you aren't, like not big ones, where I either just like don't feel good enough because I'm like, what if I can't be the girlfriend that he wants? Because in my head, with like anyone with friends and stuff, I fear that because I can't be adventurous and spontaneous and like travel and try these new restaurants and stuff, I will like hold them back. And that's like one of my worst fears, like other than being sick. Like one of my worst fears is you are not getting the life that he deserves because he works so hard. Really don't wanna pull him back in any way. And obviously like, it's not up to me. Yuan is aware of like the consequences of being in a relationship with me. I just can't have like a stereotypical normal life because I do have, differences and I do have struggles and stuff so as long as your partner is aware of these things and you keep like reminding them recovery might be possible but it also is very likely to not be possible then that's all you can really do yeah I'm gonna try and make a more strategic list hang on step one as I said before, communication is key. So as long as they're aware that their like fairy tale mindset of like you recovering and it all being perfect might not happen. I think what I said was just logical. I'm not really sure. But basically you've just got to be realistic about it. Someone that doesn't understand mental illness or has never experienced it before can sometimes see mental illness as like 
oh it'll get better like it's fine it's so hard for them to understand so as long as they're aware that you might not get better and that, that this is the reality like they might have to work with you through it for the rest of your life then that's all you can do me and you and still have conversations about like the reality of what my future could be and the reality of his because i just want him to be prepared and he's fully for helping me through it all and i'm so thankful for that and i just want to make sure that at all times he is still sure about that also set boundaries because what you see as difficult they might see as easy so for example if your partner wants to go and try a new restaurant and you don't feel ready yeah it's always good to push yourself but don't push yourself too hard because that can come back to bite you in the bum as well make them aware of your triggers make them aware of what helps you what doesn't help you just so they know because sometimes as the person with mental illness it's hard to assume that people don't understand because you're so used to like living like this sometimes it can get frustrating for us being like why can't you see it's a minefield for them as well like you don't know how to help yourself so you can't expect them to also know on that note make sure they know that they can't fix you because relationships in the past for me have ended because they've been so like set on like I can fix you and likewise for me like I'll go into relationships with people that are struggling and I'll be like I can fix them I can make them the perfect person I can solve all the problems and it's not the case at the end of the day mental illness is just as much valid as a physical illness and the way i try to explain mental illness to people is that like if for example you had somebody who had a type of cancer and was in treatment for cancer you can't fix it the treatment might be able to fix it but it also might not just know that you can't fix somebody and that it's i don't know i don't know what to say in this subject it's a tricky one i'm still trying to navigate this myself that was just my 50 pence on it so the last segment in this mental health update is like life since therapy do i need more therapy i obviously finished therapy about i think about eight months ago now for quite a while i was like yeah i think i'm okay out of therapy like i can kind of deal with it over the past i'd say the past month i think since my panic attack as well I felt a bit more out of control again i have said to my mom and i spoke to you and about it that i think i do want to go back into treatment because i feel like I've slipped back a little bit and I also feel like I still had a long way to go anyway but I just needed to see how I could do on my own. I do think I need to go back to therapy. I will be completely honest and transparent there. I have been struggling and I have been in the negative mindset of like why me? I'm not going to get better. What's the point in trying because it's not going to work. I'm having a lot of negative self-talk at the moment and I feel like I've gone back a bit with food. I just worded something really awfully so I decided to cut out and I decided to try again. I remember saying in the last video how I had a lot of like symptoms and stuff pointing towards OCD and they've just been coming at me thick and fast even more than back then but I still haven't spoken to my psychiatrist. I was meant to see my psychiatrist every three months so I was meant to see him around November and I still haven't seen him. I haven't heard from him because he basically left one job, moved to another place and I have been trying to get my files like moved and I don't know why it's been such a challenge and I've rang so many times and no one knows what's happening with my files and stuff which isn't great because I feel like I'm just here like going a bit downhill again and I don't have my psychiatrist to talk to. It's an uphill battle for sure. So I do definitely think I have OCD. Not self-diagnosing. I'm just going to put that out there. It's a tricky one. I don't know exactly what's wrong with me so i definitely need to get in touch with my psychiatrist and see what's going on see how he's been doing because it's been a bloody while since i've spoke to him i feel like i just waffled on about absolute crap i hope some of it made sense for people but at the same time these mental health updates are as much for me as you guys i just like to get it all out in some place and i feel like my youtube channel is like a great place to do it because there's a lot of people that are interested in it i am gonna go and watch love island now and i will see you all in my next video my next video is a vlog i am going to london with you and i've made a full itinerary and you'll be able to see what we get up to in that vlog so for now i'm gonna love you and leave you and i hope you're all happy and healthy i love you all so so much and i shall see you in my next video